Hey YouTube, let's make this together. Create a metahuman character that is stylized and you export it from Bridge into Maya. You can use the chapter icons below to jump to whatever section you want, but I am gonna warn you, this is for dabblers, right? You're, you're maybe a professional animator already, so that's good for you, but most people online watching YouTube to videos are not professionals and they're kind of dabbling. If you want to go beyond dabbling with YouTube videos and you actually want a career in 3D animation, I have free training for you and you can find that in the link in the description where you'll also get a free animation rig if you stay the entire time. Let's get started with the rest of this animation tutorial. And if you like, it, please consider like, commenting, and subscribing to this channel so it'll encourage me to make more content like this. So in real recently released Mesh to MetaHuman, where you can take any scan or geometry really and apply it to the MetaHuman creator kind of ecosystem. And I thought it'd be interesting to take a stylized character and apply it to the realistic MetaHuman system. And let's see how it turns out. So first things first, you need Unreal Engine 5. And first, before you even open Unreal Engine 5, you need to download the MetaHumans plugin from the marketplace. So first things first, we wanna search MetaHuman and we can find the plugin that we want to install, the MetaHuman plugin. So we can just click free and that will take us to the install to engine button, which we can just click. We wanna make sure that we add it to 5.0 and that we have Unreal Engine closed. It's half a gigabyte, so we need to download it and install, and then we can get started. I'm also gonna show you how to take this quickly into Maya so you can animate it if you wanted to, and that is the software that all professional animators use. Don't listen to people online talking about Blender. Um, that's not used in big studios. The stylized model I'm using for this example is from David Diaz. You can check out his stuff on ArtStation. So first things first, we need to open up Unreal Engine. So we can open up the launcher and then jump over into Unreal Engine 5. I wanna make sure we have the most up-to-date version of Unreal 5 before we get started. So now that we have Unreal updated, we can launch it and begin by bringing in the model into a new Unreal scene. It doesn't really matter which one we choose. I usually just use some of the default out of the box presets to get a new project started. So in the Unreal Project Browser, I'm gonna to go to Games. I'm gonna choose third person, just in case I ever wanna take this further and apply this character to a third person locomotion or something. And I'm gonna hit Create. Now inside Unreal Engine, I'm gonna right click and choose a new folder and say Stylized Character. Open this folder. And I wanna drag and drop my FBX folder or OBJ into this folder. So I'm clicking and dragging it from a folder window and I'm just gonna drop it here. And all I wanna make sure I have on is to actually combine the meshes. So I'm gonna check that on and import all. I'm gonna ignore these error messages because they don't really matter to me. In this process, we're gonna end up using the textures and everything that comes from MetaHuman. So none of these textures really matter all that much. And this character had actually had no textures. It was all just shaders. Now, before we go any further, we wanna make sure that we have the plugin actually turned on that we're gonna need for the next step. So we can go to Edit Plugins, type in MetaHuman, and we can see we have this plugin not turned on. So we need to turn it on, hit yes, and then it will restart Unreal for this plugin to take effect. So let's restart now, and then we'll jump back in. I'm gonna save everything that I just did too. Okay, now that we're back in Unreal, we can right click in this area and go to MetaHuman. This is a new category that we have that we didn't before we turned on that plugin, and we can create a new MetaHuman identity. We can just leave it as new MetaHuman identity, double click on it, it's gonna open up a new window where we're gonna choose a components from Mesh and we can choose our character. But first we wanna make sure we're signed in because that's going to help us with the Quixel bridge that we're gonna to need to use after this. So from this window, we wanna to go to components from Mesh, click this and we can choose our Mesh, which should be listed down here. We can see Superhero Geo and we can click that and it will be loaded in and we can navigate down to where our character is. And what we'll wanna do is position the camera straight on, and we can choose a lower field of view so that the character is a bit more flat. We can choose the neutral pose here, 
and promote frame. We can do it from here or there's a little plus button down here on the bottom left as well. So I'm gonna click that, reposition a little bit, hit click track active frame, and we can see down here it's loading trackers. So it's trying to kind of approximate the proportions of this character. And it looks like it got it pretty close. As we zoom in, you can see the tracking markers stay relatively in the same spot. And we could also try with uh, an unlit model that could help. But you can see that because we don't have a texture on this character, this method won't really work that great because it won't have any features to detect. So I'm gonna keep it on lit, <clears throat> but just know if you had a character with a bunch of textures, you'd probably wanna use the unlit method only when you have textures. Since we don't have textures, I'm leaving this on the lit version. And then I can just move these tracking points into place because we can see that it didn't accurately capture the shape of the eye, which is going to affect how it's going to apply this character onto the metahuman. So we can pick these individual points. We can also pick the curve itself and move the entire curve. But I'm just gonna, since there is such big changes here, I'm gonna make sure that I'm only selecting just the little circles so I can get the shape of the eye to be a bit more accurate. And I'll do this for the other eye as well. We can see the corners of the mouth maybe aren't exactly where they need to be. So I'm gonna pull those out as well and make sure the corners of the mouth are exactly where we want them to be. Now, before I go any further, I do wanna make sure that I am actually logged into the Quixel bridge. And so I can click here and see that I'm not actually signed in. So I'm gonna go ahead and sign in to that as well, because this is gonna connect through bridge so that we can access the character on MetaHuman Creator online. So because I was already logged in through the Epic Games account, I just had to click sign in and now I'm already signed into Bridge. So now back to this, we have the tracking on there and we can click MetaHuman Identity Solve. It's gonna take a second and it's basically going to apply and wrap this character's head onto a MetaHuman. So now that we've done that, we can toggle to the B view and you can kind of see the mesh topology that is going to be applied to this character from the metahuman essentially kind of template. Now, the next thing we wanna do is choose our body. So if I click body down here, I can actually choose from the metahuman body types that they have available. There's three for men, three for women. And once you've done those steps, all you have to do now is click mesh to metahuman. And that's basically going to send this through bridge to the MetaHuman Creator account that you would have when you log in through Epic on the MetaHuman Creator webpage. So once this runs, we can actually access this and tweak it on the web application of the MetaHuman Creator. So let's wait for this to finish and then we can jump into that. It says your MetaHuman is now available in Creator and Bridge in the MetaHuman section. So I'm gonna click OK. So now I'm gonna to navigate to metahuman.unrealengine.com and I'm gonna launch the latest MetaHuman Creator that works with Unreal Engine 5. So because I will be logged in through my Epic Games account, it will have tracked the fact that I sent that character from my Unreal Engine through the MetaHuman mesh to MetaHuman creator, and it's going to be available in my library of characters once we get logged in. So now that we're logged in, you can see the first attempt that I've done, and now you can see the one lacking a thumbnail is the one that we've just put in. So this is the character that we've just exported from Unreal Engine, and we can make these adjustments in this web application by choosing Edit Selected. Now we can navigate around by right-clicking, middle mouse dragging, and we can adjust each one of these attributes. And the first one I'm gonna to go to is the custom mesh, because you can see there's some a bit of warping here, maybe around the mouth and the eyes, if we didn't put those tracking markers exactly right. But this is essentially how we can adjust these kind of wrinkly areas by selecting different parts of this kind of thumbnail image representative of the face. So I'm gonna start with the mouth and we can just say region of influence, how much is what we contributed going to influence, which is at one versus, you know, the metahuman kind of topology and uh, blueprint kind of template there. So as I go back and forth, I can see whether the influence is strong or not, I can stop this. So maybe I can see it happening a bit more clearly. So you can see where maybe the tracking markers weren't perfectly, and maybe we wanna dial back the region of influence to zero on that, so it's a bit better. Then we can just kind of work outwards from there and tweaking the region of influence from what we contributed, which is this model, to 
you know, maybe something closer to that's a more neutral look, more realistic, depending on how far we want to go with the attributes of this character. So I'm just going to dial this back a little bit. And I'm going to go to the eyes because I, when I did this test last time, I saw the eyes were kind of a bit warped out. So you can see how they're adjusting here. So I'm going to dial these back just a little bit and do the same thing probably for the outer eyes. So that's what you can control from your perspective on your stylized character going to MetaHuman. This is where all of that control exists. Everything below the custom mesh attribute is all the normal MetaHuman attributes that you would find and you can apply to your character. So we can assign a skin te texture so that we can actually apply a color to this person and it will load up and we can adjust this color however we want. And then we can go through each one of these and give them you know, different teeth, makeup, head, hair, all these attributes that are available to us like any other attribute in the meta human creator kind of ecosystem. So this is really powerful that we can get a groom onto a character very quickly, adjust the color of the, of the hair and basically have this stylized character exporter with these high resolution textures and grooms. So once I'm done with this character, I can just jump back to the home screen on the MetaHuman Creator and it should save all of your changes and maybe even update this thumbnail here in a second when it reloads. So you can see it's updated the thumbnail and because I've, I've already done this once and I've chosen clothes and all these other attributes I don't want to bore you with that you can go through and choose for your own character, we can continue with the one I've already done, which is this guy right here. And we can actually export this into Maya. Now, the one kind of limitation I noticed was around the neck that my character had a pretty big neck and the clothes of the MetaHuman don't, don't really adjust that well. So I had to choose this shirt because I found it had the best neck. And maybe this will change and improve every iteration and update they do. But that was one limitation I saw so far. So now to get this into Maya, we need to open up the kind of desktop application of Bridge, not the one that exists inside of Unreal Engine. So if you don't already have Bridge installed on your desktop, then you want to go ahead and install that. And then we can open up that separate application. And because we have our account synced, it will actually sync up with the MetaHuman creator. And this character should show up in our Bridge window here. So if we go to our MetaHuman category here, we can go to My MetaHumans UE5, and we should see both of these characters appear. One issue I found when I was trying to export this into Maya was the fact that when I originally installed Quixel Bridge, I installed the Maya plugin when I only had Maya 2022 installed. Now I have Maya 2023 installed, and the install plugin button over here is no longer there because I've already used it and it's already finding Maya 2022 on my system and that's where it's gonna send it. It's gonna send it to Maya 2022. So we would wanna open up the version that we have or we need to uninstall Bridge, I'm assuming, and completely reinstall it. And because this is a free tutorial on YouTube, I'm not gonna take the time to do that and test it. Maybe you can try that and let me know if that works for you. That's my guess is that that should work if I wanted to use this in Maya 2023 or I could just export up my 2022, save out a file and open up that Maya file in 23 after I've got it exported and saved in a 2022. So if you have installed Bridge for the first time, you wanna make sure that you have the export settings selected. So there would be an install plugin button right here, but because it's already checking that I haven't installed in Maya 2022, it's not giving me that option to reinstall the plugin into other versions of Maya. So that's one little limitation you wanna look out for. That you're using the correct version of Maya that you have installed that's associated with this. Now, you might also have seen the download settings for this. And so we would wanna make sure that under models, we have Megascans, FBX, and MetaHumans, we have the U asset and source asset so that it can actually export the real deal into Maya. So those are the settings that I've chosen and I've already downloaded this one. So all I have to do is just click export. But if you haven't downloaded your character yet, just like this one, you can see we can't export it yet. We first have to download and then we can export to Maya, all right? It's going to export to the program based on your export settings, right? If we wanted to export this to Unreal Engine or some other program, we could do that as well. But right now I'm just showing you Maya. So I have Maya 2022 open and then I can jump back to bridge and say export while double checking that my export settings are going to send it to Maya, I'm gonna click export 
and it should export it into Maya successfully. And it says it has, so we can jump over here and it's gonna ask us, are we sure we want to import the MetaHuman? We can say, yep. And it's going to go through this whole process and actually create a face rig for us. And we can actually animate that inside of Maya and then export it back into Unreal using the quick selection sets for the geometry, which is the controls of the character. I have another tutorial about that if you wanna take a look at how we actually round trip from Maya to Unreal with this character's facial animation. So you can check that out. It hasn't changed since I've done that tutorial. It's the same process. All right, after about 10 minutes of waiting, we now have the character inside of Maya and it's loading all the textures. And now we have the face rig available to us, which we can adjust right here. So that is how, let's see if I can puppet this. So that is how you create a meta human character that is stylized and you export it from uh, bridge into Maya. And then if you wanna learn how to bring this back into Unreal, if you animate this, then I have another tutorial that you can watch for that. While this is all well and good to learn stuff like this, this is really just kind of dabbling into little technical things. If you wanna actually work as an animator in the animation industry, it's gonna take a lot more and I created an entire free training to show you the path it takes to become a professional 3D animator and not just dabble with YouTube tutorials because that's only gonna get you so far, which is not very far. <laughs> so if you're tired of dabbling online with YouTube tutorials and you want to take a deeper look at what it actually takes to create a career out of animation, which I've done for the past decade, I recommend taking my free training and you can also get access to a free animation rig that will help you get started as well. So I'll see you in that free training. The link is in the description.